<laughs> I was wrong, guys. I was wrong, but guess what? I'm a grown man. I can admit when I was wrong. Earlier, when OP04 was first being released, we never quite had all the cards on the sim. I was doing some tabletop simulator testing, and then one of my videos that you could see on the screen right now clearly shows that I had no faith in Rebecca. Well, you know, there were a bunch of events that happened over the weekend, and specifically the one in Japan, the top two decks were Rebecca. I was wrong. But hey, guess what? It's your boy Ryan here, aka Blackbeard TCG. I hope you guys are all having an amazing day. And if not, hopefully I can make it a little bit better. Now look, like I said, I was wrong, but it's all good because now we're gonna learn some tech. Okay, so first and foremost, things are interesting because obviously as you guys know, OP04, I've been playing a ton of Queen, been loving that um, for OP04. OP03, um, out of the new leaders, I've actually been dabbling in some Robert Lucci, so stay tuned for that um, because I've been having some fun with Rob Lucci. I think that he definitely has a lot more potential than what I initially gave him credit for because I wasn't really having too much fun playing it. And so, uh, but now I am. And so specifically with Rebecca, now obviously I looked at her and I was like, oh man, she feels so slow um, when I'm playing her and when I'm facing other people, like they can't really get to that point where they can pop off. And I mean, now look, right? Now we see these players or these tournaments with hundreds of players and the top two decks being Rebecca. You know, metas have changed right now. It's not more so all just Zoro and Whitebeard, but don't get me wrong, there's still a ton of Zoro and Whitebeard out there. But now I would say, and correct me if I'm wrong, guys, in the comment section below, but the meta is really focused on the Zoro, Whitebeard, Law, Rebecca, um, Luchi, as well as uh do fil film mingo right i would say that though that's probably the meta now from what we're seeing in opio 4 and quite honestly I'm, I'm fine with that because um you know there's, there's a varied amount of decks that you can actually play now it's not just cookie cutter two to three decks right so i'm really excited about that now here's the thing that's interesting about these lists guys here's the thing that's really interesting so the one that's playing the dress rosa stage came in second so I'm confused because, like, I don't know. To me, the stage is what makes the deck pop off. Now, I'll be completely honest. I've yet to watch the gameplay. Um, clearly, he got to the final. So clearly, this variation of the deck works, right? Like, that. Like he got to the finals. He got to second place. Uh, that's nothing to, 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 to laugh at, right? Like, uh, I, would, I would dream to get that prizing, right? So, um... Clearly, this build is good, but I'm just curious how it lost to this. Now, obviously, it could be dice roll. I don't know how the mirror match goes because I'm going to, I'm very, very, like, going to, like, well, I can't even speak because I'm so excited. But I do this on one take. I was going to say, I'll be very, very honest with y'all. I haven't done a Rebecca versus Rebecca mirror match. I'm going to be honest with y'all. So I, I don't know how that's supposed to go. I don't know if it's just who high rolls. I don't know if it's just based on who plays uh, a Sabo first or whatnot. You know what I mean? I, I don't know how that interaction goes. And because I never watched that last matchup video, I don't know what went down. And so I can't really say like, oh, this build is just better and you shouldn't play the stage in Rebecca because of that. So unless you guys are a lot more nuanced on this, you know, if you guys are more nuanced on this, drop me some information in the comments below. But it's interesting how we see this version running four secret coups on while this version is running four of the SR one. I think that's really cool. And I can see in a vacuum where this build would actually or not this build where this deck can actually see a lot of play in this meta and have a lot of value right you look at um cards like kairos right who have the ability to pop things that are cost one or less right um and then you have um gats as well that allows you to attack active cards um this is actually a pretty good deck in the sense of a medical this is just me again going off my head cannon i haven't actually watched the footage yet and i will be watching that to learn because i do want to learn how to play this deck um but it just makes sense because again if you're going up against law right law's not going to be tapping things early and doing stuff without him having the ability to room shambles right so being able to attack those active cards and kind of set them back a little bit or be able to pop them with leo or be able to pop them with kairos or things like that right you're able to get those little chump cards off the board very early to try to disrupt the laws and then of course as well you can kind of do that to an extent 
with Zoro as well, depending on the types of builds that they're running. Now, I'm not quite sure how this deck fares into Whitebeard, and of course, we're seeing a lot more Whitebeard being played. I mean, a lot more. We're still seeing a lot of Whitebeard being played, and so because of that, to be quite frank, I'm not quite sure how this deck would really do that well into Whitebeard. Of course, you have tools to drop the cost of 9-cost Whitebeard, and then you can further pop it from there. Uh, this card here, I forgot the name of it. Uh, where is it? Or Lumbus, I don't even know if I pronounce that right. But this one's not that bad because obviously you can combo this with Sobble so you don't have to pop anything. There's a lot of cool interactions that you could do. Um, but yeah, this allowing you to minus four costs, um, that can automatically bring something down that's nine cost to four cost. And then you can continue to drop that as well if you are utilizing your four cost Kuzon um, to, to bring that down. So it goes from nine um, to five and then Kuzon brings it to one. And then from there, it can be popped with a very with various amount of cards uh, that you have access Access to in black and in dress rosa right so there's ways to get that off the board there's ways to be extremely aggressive with your seven cost monkey d luffy as we see every build running um you know being able to have that consistency with with sabo so i could see the deck working very very well and again the more i look at this list the more that i like this list like i'm gonna practice this deck and play with this list even though that this one won because I like the two, the 3,000 worlds. I think that this card... Like, you're playing blue. You have access to one of the best events. Like, I really like that. I can see why not playing Red Rock because it's super high cost. And, like, there's already such big cost things that you want to play. Like, curve-wise, it doesn't really make sense. So, I can see why you would opt to not play the Red Rock. Um, but I do like the 3,000 worlds here. And I do like um, this card. I forgot what it's called. Um, let's go ahead and look it up real quick. Uh, six King Pistol. So you can trash one card from your hand. You gain plus 3,000 power. And then if it's triggered, you get to draw one, then KO one of your opponent's characters with a cost of one or less, which is, again, is, is pretty good uh, uh, in, in a meta like this, right? Where you're going to see some of those other decks that we talked about earlier. So for, for me, like, I don't know. This list on paper looks really damn good. And again, it got second. So it's not like this list is bad. <laughs> Clearly, this list is good, right? Um... But again, I'm just surprised it lost, but I definitely think that I'm going to like just net deck this. I'm going to copy it card for card with this list and then I'll play test it. And who knows, maybe I'll, I'll test it and I'll get to a point where like it eventually evolves into something like this. But in my opinion, I definitely think the stage is something Rebecca needs, something Rebecca wants. In terms of the rest of the cards, I'll be honest, guys, I don't know. I know the basics, right? I know the combos where you can combo uh, this guy where my mouse is right now with, with Sabo, right? Um, you know, you have all the different ways to pop pop things. Um, you have Kairos that um, allows you to stay alive by arresting your Rebecca and all those things. And Kairos continues to be a threat. Like, So I, I know the basics of the deck, but I don't know the true increase. What's the word? In intricacies? There we go. English is hard sometimes. But like I said, I do this all in one take. I don't know all the intricacies of this deck. And so again, I'm not an expert on it. And so I'm not going to pretend to be an expert on it. But all I'm going to say is on paper and based on what I know, I like this list more. But tell me in the comment section below, if you guys can explain it to me, what makes Rebecca so cracked? What makes her so good? How does the deck really function and run? Let me know so I can learn. I want to learn from you guys as well. Once I get more comfortable re with Rebecca and all that stuff, I'll share with you guys my own list as well. And you know, I'm super curious to see if other regions start to pick it up and if Re Rebecca starts becoming a threat overall in the metagame. Super excited. I'm glad to see some decks that aren't red take that first place spot. Well, with all of that being said, guys, I love you all. I'll catch you guys later. Peace.